Now the real challenge of Dark Souls 2 starts around mid-game, upon entering Iron Keep, and the first boss to test our dodging capabilities and showcase the game's hitboxes is definitely Mitha. The next boss to wrongfully get the reputation of bad hitboxes is the Smelter Demon, but even in his last stage, his attacks have tight hitboxes. Further into the game, we fight Nika. And once again, the hitboxes are surprisingly good, and we are able to dodge all her attacks when timed correctly. Even Freya's bite attack is possible to dodge. The giants in Black Gulch are also considered to have badly designed hitboxes, but we managed to put that myth to rest as well. The thing that saddens me the most with all the misinformation regarding Dark Souls 2 is that most people out there never gave this game a chance and blindly believed popular opinions big YouTubers created at the time. People put their trust in poorly documented reviews by non-gamers who had important voices. I hope this video will serve as an eye-opening showcase that will give the community another chance to enjoy this masterpiece for themselves. Next, we fought one of my favorite bosses in the main game. The atmosphere, epic lighting and boss design is one of the most memorable experiences in any Souls game. And the hitbox design was just as good as the rest of the hitboxes we had faced up until now. Velstat actually surprised me with incredibly well-made hitboxes and we managed to completely evade an attack that went just over our head. The run through main game showcased very good hitboxes, and not once did we get catched by lingering attack frames or phantom range. We only died two times up until now, only using the available Estus at hand. Moving on to the DLCs, there were plenty of bosses I wanted to put to the test, and with some investment in attunement, we tackled all the bosses with only 9 iframes in this run. Sin provided to be yet another boss wrongfully labeled with bad or delayed hitboxes, but we could easily see that this is not the case when our rolls are timed correctly. Moving on, I expected Blue Smelter to have equally good hitboxes as his cousin. We took on Grave Robbers and witnessed precise attack frames from all three of them. Next up was Fume Knight and his notorious slow swipe attack in phase 2. Its attack frames are surprisingly tight and we managed to roll through his special attack twice, giving us a win first try. Lod and Zolan had hitboxes we could trust, just like Ava. We had finally reached Alon and my favorite boss in the DLCs. His attacks are probably some of the best designed in the game and with extremely tight hitboxes to complement this epic showdown. His famous grab attack was once thought impossible to escape, but we finally proved that it's easily done even with only 9 iframes. GG Alon. As we entered the last boss of the DLCs, Ivory King. We decided to take him on without Lois Knights for an added challenge. We managed to beat him and his burnt knights with well-timed dodges and positioning. I hope this showcase will be the last nail in the coffin for all the misconceptions regarding adaptability, hitboxes and life gems in Dark Souls 2. I love this community and greatly appreciate the support we have received the last weeks. You guys are amazing.